My name is Gerard O'Shea. I'm the service manager here at McHale, and we're just going to walk you through the control box on the Fusion 3 Pro and Fusion 3 Plus machines, our iTouch control unit. So here you have the touch screen, but you also have the actual physical buttons down on each side of the screen as well. Um, in manual mode, where the control unit is at the moment, you've got manual control over all the functions on the machine. The four buttons across the bottom of the screen here, the home button will always bring you back to home position. The circular button here will switch from your standard screen to your two cameras, which plug into the back of the screen. The escape button will escape any errors that pop up on the screen or bring you back out of a menu. And the enter button is used for certain functions on the control unit, such as turning on and off the weighing system on the machine. So if we go through the menu structure on the machine itself, you can see here it brings up a menu across the top of the screen. The first option is your bail, bailer setup. So our first option here is auto tip. So we can turn that on and off. So it will tip the bail automatically when the next bail in the chamber is full. Our second option here is to turn our wrapper off, on, and you can also turn it on to one roll of film. So normally we would use two rolls of film, but you have the option if you're wrapping with one roll of film only, rather than the machine knowing there's one roll of film on it, you can just select this option so it will wrap with one roll of film every single bale. Our number of wrap rotations is our third option here. So normally we're on six layers or four, six or eight layers of film, depending on the crop and the climate. So 12 rotations is six layers of film, 16 rotations is eight layers of film. So it's half, half the number of rotations is the number of layers you're putting on the bale. Our fourth option here is our bale density, depending on the density you require in the crop, depending on what crop it is. So that's an adjustment from one to 10. You can increase it and decrease it here with your plus and minus button on the side. Our bale size setting. Now you're not changing the bale size a huge amount. This is more to do with the volume of crop that's been going into the machine and the speed that you're traveling at. So normally we would aim to adjust this setting so that when the chamber is full and your buzzer goes off to tell you your bale is full, you're seeing 30 centimeters, 30 millimeters of chrome on the hydraulic cylinder. At this point, the chamber is just open a little bit and your bale chamber is perfectly round. This assists in the application of net and plastic going on the bale very easily. So we would adjust this setting normally down for heavy rows of crop, where you have a big volume of crop going into the machine at the one time, or if you're in lighter crop, you can increase it a little bit as well. Our last option here on this screen is our oiler for our chains. So again, it's a setting from one to 10, depending on the conditions you're in and how much oil you want to go on the chains. The higher the number, the more oil that will go on the chains. We have a second screen here. So if I choose this one over here, it brings me onto the next screen. This option here is the chamber opening time. We have three options. Uh, long, short and manual, so how long the chamber will stay open for to transfer the bale. Again, depending on the conditions you're in, hilly conditions or whatever, you may require a little more time to get the bale onto the wrapping cradle. As standard, it's set on the shortest time. The second option here is our film sensors. So while you're wrapping, it's monitoring to make sure the film is going on the bale, both rolls of film. So you can choose to switch them on or off. Naturally, they will be on all of the time. The next three options here are in relation to our side tip. So if you have a side tip on the back of the machine to tip the bale onto its end, depending on the conditions you're in again, the weight of the bale, you can adjust the speed of the tip going down, the delay at the bottom, and the speed of the tip coming back up again. So that controls the bale going off onto the ground and over onto its end, depending on your conditions and your weight of bale. Our last option on this screen is bale rotation after wrapping. This is generally used in dusty conditions where we can just rotate the bale on its own after wrapping. This gets the layers of plastic to bind and stick together a little bit better, particularly in dusty conditions. So you can set that to a number of seconds so the bale will just sit there rolling on the wrapper after wrapping. If we go on to our next screen here again, we have the same option. If you're in hilly conditions again and the bale goes out of the wrapper, out of the bale or into the wrapper, slightly to one side, you can roll the bale before wrapping. So the bale doesn't sit on the wrapper 
for two or three seconds on one side. It rolls the bale and gets it into a perfect position for wrapping. Again, you can adjust this in seconds, how many seconds you roll it for before wrapping starts. Uh, the first option on that screen there is our additive applicator. So we have a 12 volt supply coming out of the ECU on the machine where you can plug in an additive applicator and you can switch it on and off from there. And our last option here, which is a new option for 2021 season, is our knife pressure. We can adjust this up and down. Again, depending on the conditions you're in, stony conditions, different types of crop, and the different number of knives that you may be chopping with. So if it's six or seven knives, or the full half set of 12 or 13, or the full 25 knives, your knife pressure can be changed to setting one, two, or three. One, we're chopping with a slightly lower pressure of about 35 bar. Two, we're chopping with a pressure of about 45 bar. And on number three, we're on maximum knife pressure, if you were chopping with 25 knives, of about 55 bar pressure. So that's all in your first menu. Our second menu here is our bale count setup. So it gives you all your different options for putting in all your customer details into the machine. It'll record all of the bale count every time you bale for that particular customer. And you can save all that information there. And if you go back to that customer again in two weeks time to make more bales, you can select the same customer and it will add into the same total. Um, also on that screen, we have the lube count. So the cartridge of grease on the machine will be empty after 300 bales and the control box will remind you after 300 bales that you need to change it. So you can reset that back to 300 every time you replace the cartridge of grease. We also have a grand total, which is the lifetime total of the machine. Um, you cannot change this. On our third menu option here, it's the menu option from choosing from net to film. So your NRF film within the chamber or net. Obviously this is only on the Fusion 3 Plus machine, not on the Fusion Pro. So the first option here is to choose net or film. So on the net selection, if we choose net, our second option here underneath it is the stretch on the net. So we work from zero to 10% stretch on the net, depending on the crop you're baling and the quality of net you're using. Normally we would run at six, six or seven um, setting on this. You can set the net delay, which you see here is set at three seconds. So this is the time delay between your bale being full and the buzzer going off to where the net actually starts to feed in. So it allows you time to stop the machine so that you're not feeding in crop at the same time as the net is going onto the bale. So that's normally set at three seconds. Uh, the number of rotations of net that you want to apply to the bale, again, you can adjust this up or down, um, normally set at two, 2.5 rotations. Um, we have a sensor option here, which cannot be turned on, but if I choose the film option here, this will turn on for me. So we still have the same settings as we had for net, our stretch for our film, which is only determined by the type of film it is. So depending on the thickness of film and the manufacturer of the film, there will be a sticker or a marking on the roll of film to tell you what the stretch should actually be. The number of seconds delay between the bale full and the film feeding in, we normally keep this much lower than we would do at net. So we're feeding the tail of film into the machine as the last bit of crop goes in. This helps the film to go around the bale. And because it's film, of course, when the bale is being opened, it's quite easy to remove this from the bale, unlike net. Um, our third op top option here, the number of rotations of film you're putting on. Um, the minimum for the number of rotations of film is 3.2. Um, so normally that's where we'd run 3.2, 3.5 rotations of film. And as I said, the option here, which will switch on when the control unit is connected to a machine, is the sensor that tells you whether the film is on the bale or not. So when your bale is full and it applies film on the bale, we've got a sensor there that's reading the film on the bale. And if there's no film on the bale, then it will not transfer the bale. It will throw an error up on the screen for you. You can switch that sensor on or off. Our next option across the top of the screen here is our control unit setup. So very simply, just the brightness and darkness of the screen, the volume control on the screen, the time and date settings, and our camera options as well. If we go into the camera options, we can see we've got four different options up here, A, B, C, and manual. So A, B, C means that one or both of your cameras 
will switch on for whatever number of seconds you want them to. So generally the cameras will come on for the application of net or film on the bale, the bale transfer, the wrapping of the bale and the bale tip at the back. So you can choose those four settings and you can set the number of seconds that the camera will come on for. This will depend on your conditions and what you want to be looking at when the machine is transferring a bale. You can choose a manual option here as well, which allows you to switch the camera on using the button down here and switch it off whenever you like. So you can switch to the camera only in manual mode, so it won't come up automatically as you're bailing. Most people will use it in fully automatic mode. You have the option here of choosing one camera or two cameras. So that will allow you to switch between the camera at the back, which is looking at the bale being transferred, wrapped and tipped, or the camera within the chamber watching the film and the net going on the bale. You also have the option of choosing the size of the camera display on the screen. So we can display it in this center square of the screen or we can display it on the full screen, depending on which way you want to look at it. Our fourth option there is our technician menu, which we use in the service department. It's all the settings within the software. The technical guys on the road would use the diagnostics menu here for diagnosing problems with sensors or anything like that. So it's quite easy to get into and to check all of your sensors on the machine. Escape will bring you back to your main screen. If I switch to my camera here, you can see the blue screen because I don't have a camera connected to it. That's what will appear. So that's well the smaller screen where your camera option is. So that's your control box, going through the full menu and all the settings within the control box. Thank you for your time.